live right now at the Indianapolis 500 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Good friend of mine. He's actually attempted to qualify and be a part of this. Uh, everybody knows uh, his great grandfather, Harvey Firestone. Uh, we ride on the tires all the time. Uh, schoolmate of mine and uh, professional race car driver, Nick Firestone. Nick, good morning and welcome back to Laying Down the Law. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, thank you. I, I love this show and everything it stands for. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Um, and the and the other thing is, um, you are going to at some point in the near future uh, escort us through uh, the in Indianapolis 500 and and show us all the things that uh, uh, your family has helped the racing world build. I'm holding you to that on live radio. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, in, in fact, I'm literally uh, standing in the pit lane. Right by the scoring tower, you know the big black tower, and then you know the, the, the iconic uh, landmarks, and um, you know with a, a group of friends and some of my family, and yeah, I mean uh, I would love to do that next year, and uh, it, it's it's a amazing feeling just being on you know this pit lane again, and so it's an amazing feeling for anyone to sort of be on the pit lane, and we're going to walk on the track here pretty soon, and you know be on the track at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway race morning. Uh, stands are starting to fill up. People everywhere. It's uh, it's uh, you know, it's back. You know, and India's like definitely coming back in terms of its luster and everything. That's you know from its glory days. So it's just nice to see. We're talking with Nick Firestone. Is it's great grandson of Harvey? Is that right? Am I always? That's right. I just know you're yep. my schoolmate, man. I I didn't know where Steve you are. Foster, who didn't you not go to school with? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You know, today we're going to have on the show. Right. Well, <laughs> hey, listen. You know, good thing. It, it's uh, a pleasure for the show and for the listeners. Nick, tell us about uh, your family's involvement getting into racing, and then you uh, also uh, going for your attempts to qualify for this uh, great race. Well, uh, my great grandfather is like recognized early on. Um, you know, he found out there's going to be a 500 mile race in, you know, Indianapolis in, in 1911, and said, "Look, you know, we got to sponsor some cars, we got to sponsor some drivers, we got to get our name out there because, I mean, back then, I mean, you know, we take it for granted now, but back then, you know, when you went on a trip, you know, a lot of times, I mean, you know, other people's tires, not ours, but a lot of times they would literally pop. So he wanted to, you know, use racing as a marketing venue to, like, you know, demonstrate the quality of the, of the tire, demonstrate the quality of the product. And in that sense, seriously, he's, well, you know, he was one of the pioneers in the whole sports marketing industry. I mean, he was back doing sponsorship before anyone had agents or, you know, thought to put a name on a soccer uniform, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so fast forward, you know, uh, a number of years to when I tried to qualify in 99 and it was actually cool when I was here because you know Goodyear was here as well and, and it was a great rivalry it was a great competition and um, it was nice to you know be in a car and look up on the you know the front tires and see you know my name there and you know my grandfather's you know great grandfather's legacy there and you know try and go out there and qualify for the show but also you know if I didn't I didn't get a chance to make the show, but, you know, if I didn't go out there and win it, I wanted someone else on Firestone to go win it. And, and now they're the sole supplier at Indy. But, um, I mean, I think they'd be the first to tell you they would welcome the competition because, you know, we whacked the four of them last time, and I don't see why we wouldn't do the same if, if anyone came back to try and challenge us. <laughs> because I'm the, saying that with a smile on my face. They, <laughs> they got the competitive, <laughs> competitive juices flowing, right. boy. Because Firestone aims to please, baby. <laughs> we aims to please at Firestone, no <laughs> doubt. That's a, that's a little uh, – Inside slogan that uh, Nick and I. Hey, Nick. Nick is a tremendous spades player too. I know when Spencer what? was here. Oh yeah, uh, Nick what? Firestone could play some spades. Yeah. That was the only time we pulled the all nighter was when Nick and some other guys from the football and the volleyball teams we could you, play. You, you want to make spades. Spades. If You want to make a brother mad? Renege on some books and spades. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to make, like hey, make some white folks mad, Renege on some books too. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we was about fighting up in that dorm room, boy. I tell you, I was like, hey yeah, man. Exactly. Calm down. Nick, <laughs> explain to the listeners and us the feeling of going 200 miles an hour in a race car, man. Well, quickly, too, I was also a hockey player. So, yeah, we almost were fighting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tall for a driver. I mean, they, they definitely made the cars bigger, and, and uh, 
there's some taller guys out there. But back when I did it, my head was actually pretty high in the cockpit uh, to the point where it's almost like blocking the engine and things. But the reason I mention that is, for me personally, uh, and they'll tell you this when you come here and you're with your orientation meeting. I mean, normally by the time you get here, you've gone 100 miles, 190 miles an hour at a split second at the fastest point on the fastest track. And so they sit you down in, the, in their rookie meeting, and they're like, listen, keep in mind, when you get going here, your minimum speed is 217. Your minimum speed is 217, which is about right. And, you know, I was coming down the straightaways in my time period, turns one and three at 230. I had an old teammate that me, showed me his like, computer traces. He was doing 239. And the only way I can explain to people is when the car is clad, a, a, a real-time speedometer, and then the lap time came up a mile an hour. But... As soon as my car hit 200 miles an hour, as loud as that engine is, which is sitting right by my head, all I could hear was wind noise. So I said, if you want to know what it's like to drive, get in a Learjet, open the window at altitude, and stick your head out. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Now, and see, now, I'm former Air Force, and I actually got to go up in an F-4 um, and worked on radio systems, and totally different feeling of going, you know, and when they hit the afterburners, you are moving. I can't even imagine driving a car at that speed and, and steering it. I, I mean, but the technology around the vehicles has to be, you know, tremendous. You know, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, and, and it, you know, it, it is like driving a fighter plane on the on the deck. I mean, um, the technology is incredible. I mean, now, um, you know, it's, it's luckily for us from a driving standpoint, you know, there's technology in the cars in terms of, you know, the carbon fiber cars. Uh, you have telemetry on everything. You have real-time telemetry. I mean, you can't lie anymore. Um, they got a trace on your throttle foot, and if you lift that thing off the deck, they know it. So you can't come in anymore and say that you're flat out everywhere because they, they'll tell you no, you're not. Um, but there's also, like, there's tremendous, like, safety in terms of, the, you know, they, they have padding around the driver's head now, which is amazing, and then sort of, like, you know, prevents a lot of the head injuries. I mean, I know head injuries and concussions like a big discussion in football but you know head injuries is your biggest fear when you crash one of these cars but you know when you see them crash and it looks like they're exploding that's actually what they're supposed to do that's all the all the parts and you know absorbing the impact um you know you got a, a adjustable front and rear wing so you can adjust the balance of the car you know get it to do what you want it to do get it to turn a little better and sometimes actually get it to turn a little less make make it turn in a little less sensitive because what people don't realize when you're doing 230 it's, it's a football field a second and, you know, you really, really, really have to look far down the track because everything gets super narrow. And if you're going to make an adjustment from a driving standpoint, like if you're going to barely lift off the throttle to keep the car off the wall, you're making adjustments an eighth of a mile in advance. So you're doing eighth just the mile, same thing? Like, the same thing what? is, no, it's just the same thing adjusting as you're driving as in similar to what a fighter pilot does? In terms of, I'm sorry, say it again, it's getting loud here. What, 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 I'm sorry, what did you say? I said in terms of, of just like a fighter pilot, you're, you're adjusting your, your, your wings and your ailerons or well, your ailerons in a plane, but you're adjusting that on the fly as you're driving? Yeah, yeah. And, wow. And, 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 you know, it's, not, it's obviously not, it's not you, know, we, you know, you guys are on, like on top of it because, you know, it, it's instantaneous. But, yeah, you have adjustment in the car. You have like uh, roll bars and stuff, and you, and you can definitely start to mess with those. Um, to try and help the car mechanically. But, you no, know, when you come in, uh, the, the wings, so the, by the rules, the wings can't be adjustable um, on the fly. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, every, what everyone would do is, what everyone would do is, like, level the wings on the straightaway, right, and get all this, because it's, it's less drag, and then haul ass in the corner. And if the, and if the wings fail to come back up for the turn, you would basically turn in with a ton of speed and no downforce and crash. So the, the wing adjustments I was talking about, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll talk to the driver on the radio, and, you know, when he comes in for a pit stop, you know, they'll ask him like, "What do you need?" And he's like, "You know, I need like, I need need another turner front wing, or I need another turner rear wing." Or, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that part is done in the pits. But and also you can you can adjust what's called a weight checker. That you can do real time. So on an oval, you try and put like left front weight in the car to help it turn. And you have a you have a mechanism on your dash to move weight from the left side of the car to the right. Which what you're basically doing is is unscrewing or screwing in a spring on the on the shock. But it, it transfers weight, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it makes that, a lot of sense. That's a that's a huge help. We're talking. Uh, I had a weight. I had a weight jacker on my go kart, but I had a, it was like I took an eight ball and like drilled it and then put grooves in it and stuck it on a on a on an arm and I would like twist this eight ball to try and get weight from the left <laughs> side of the car to the right side of the car. 
Wow. Talk a little more sophisticated now. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Nick Firestone, the great grandson of Harvey Firestone at the Indianapolis 500. Jeff, you got a question? Oh here? yeah, I want to ask: Is there a youth program that the Indy Series puts on? Because I know for a fact, if I had opportunity when I was a kid to, you know, have opportunity to drive an Indy car, and they had a youth program to where they bring inner city kids in, and you know, um, uh, um. Kids that you know grew up in, in the hood or whatever, have opportunity to come out and and drive cars and get interested in driving those cars and having a a, a more diverse program. Do y'all have a program such? This- yeah, you know, I, I don't think they do. I mean, the closest thing to that though is you know you have at least in Phoenix, you guys probably have them there. All those indoor karting places, um, and they're pretty good about getting the kids in the indoor karts which is like a great place to learn because it's like a great speed, you know, it's like a great entry point. Yeah, you know, I was I'm saying, gonna, I was kind of saying like, does the Indy series have like a feeder system? Like the NFL now, for instance, the NFL now is going more grassroots. We are, they are constantly now um, getting themselves more involved with the um, middle school and high school level kids because they want to produce better NFL players, better quality NFL players. Kind of like RBI baseball, and they're exactly. going into the inner city to look for, exactly. for more minority kids in baseball. But, exactly. uh, you know, driving because uh, – and, and I know you know this gentleman's name um, – in the in the Daytona, the black gentleman over in Daytona who won, and they never gave him the championship window, back win, in window the window. Window Tyler, yeah, and uh, you know, yeah, I think I know that. Did you say that's where you from? <laughs> hey, Jeff is from Florida, Nick, so he certainly uh, yeah, exactly. know, knows yeah. about all that. Um, it, it would be tremendous to do that. Um, let me ask you this: Tony Kanan, the defending champion, who do you like today uh, for the, the 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 milk? And we're gonna ask you about that too. Uh, uh, the the milk bath in the Indianapolis 500. Who do, who do I like to? Who, who do I think is going to drink the milk? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I have to agree. I mean, I, I think Tony's got a good chance to win it. I know he didn't qualify as high as uh, he would hope, but race is a whole different ball game, and, and race pass a whole different thing. And Tony's very good around here. I mean, he was leading the whole half. You know, had a lot of chances before he won. So I, I would think Tony is. Uh, also, Tony's in my pool. We do like a little draft pool, and I got Tony. But I also think, I think Marco do. I really do. He's been so close so many times. So I'm, I'm going between Tony and Marco. I mean, my two picks. I get two. All right. Well, listen. Yeah. We... I, I probably think... Go ahead. I have to take one. I'll probably take Marco. Okay. I think Marco's a little bit better speed this year. Well, the... We wanted to ask you, too, man. Why not have some chocolate milk? You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, the, I don't know. If, the, if the black guy wins, can we have chocolate milk? Well, but we were saying, we were saying, Nick, yeah, exactly. everybody, exactly. everybody says chocolate milk is what you use for recovery. So if you drive yeah, exactly. a, at 230 miles an hour for 500 miles, would you want to recover after the? Am I am I opening a can of worms with the folks in Indiana if I say we should have chocolate milk instead of? Yeah, well, uh, I, I was going to say politically correct answer to this question because I, I, I really I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the best way to answer that. You know, I have my chocolate milk walking around just telling her, you know, I'm so enthused about seeing. It. And the great thing about that I like, and we have a. Uh, and as you know, you're going to try to come to Austin for the Circuit of the Americas. You can see in NASCAR and in the Indianapolis 500 the whole entire track. And to me, for at least U.S. and, and, and Americans, and what all, we like to see the whole thing. I just don't want to sit on one turn and hope that I catch, you know, a couple of these F1 cars necessarily like I do to see everybody racing around the track. We certainly appreciate your time. We know you're there with your family. And uh, we appreciate the live looking and your thoughts. You know, anytime that uh, you're close, Texas Motor Speedway, uh, CODA, Circuit of the Americas, let us know. And I know that you're doing a lot of things. You've got a website and information like that. Offline, I'll get that information um, or text it to me. And uh, we'll let people know uh, where you can go because I know you're very interested in uh, – the development of race car drivers, the youngsters, and kart racing and different things like that. And we'd love to get that information out. So text me that information, and I'll let the listeners know. Yes, the grandson of Harvey Firestone, Nick Firestone, uh, professional race car driver at the Indianapolis 500 today uh, with a live look-in. Chico, uh, AAU Indy. 
A-A-U-N-D. A-A-U-N-D. Now, I don't know, I don't know if, if uh, insurance will... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That that is probably the reason why. <laughs> right. But you know right, but right. but he was talking about the indoor cart. You know, we have right. one in San Antonio. Yeah, we got one called. in Austin too. I've I've actually done it. Man, that's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's, it's fun. It's fun. It and fun. have you ever had a chance to do it yet? You know that. I, look, I should have known that. <laughs> so and you probably know the guy who owned it. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it, and and I'm pretty sure it was free for him. Yes, it was free. You know, it was free. Steve you know, Austin would about, get into you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I've never seen anybody that never has any credentials get into as much stuff as this guy right here. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, it's like, hey, man, where you at? Oh, I'm over at the so-and-so professional whatever. I'm like, huh? How'd you get in that? Oh, man, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. We're going to take a sidebar because I think we need to get out of this segment. We'll come back right here on Laying Down the Law. 